What would you do if you won the pools? Or if you won the state lottery? What would you do if you won four million dollars or two million pounds? And all of us, of course, like to think of what we would do. And we think, oh, I'd buy my Aunt Joan this and I'd buy my father this and I'd take this kind of a holiday or vacation and I'd buy this kind of house and then I'd love this kind of car and I might even learn to fly. And we think of all the wonderful things we would do. And all of us rise to that because we feel deep down that we were actually made for that kind of thing, don't we? And we may smile at each other when we say that, but we deep down do feel that uh, that's something of what we were meant to have. And uh, if we could experience that, that would be absolute happiness and perfect uh, fulfillment. Deep down, of course, we uh, know from observing other people that, in fact, it isn't absolute happiness or complete fulfillment, but still we feel there's something there that makes us excited. There's something there that satisfies a need that we have and that we know is real. And, of course, it is true. There is a need deep down that we have for the security that that kind of money would appear to bring us. And so all of us work and slave during our lifetime to try to get something of that kind of security. We never reach uh, that degree of uh, material security, but we try to head towards it because we feel we were made for some kind of stability. Well, we often express it this way. We say, I want my children to have what I did not have. That's a, a well-known saying. We all know that. And we all rise to it and say, ah, that's a very laudable and a very human and reasonable uh, motive to have in your life. I want my children to have what I didn't have. And uh, we all feel that's right to do that. But deep down, of course, we feel that if our children can have what we didn't have, maybe uh, we will have some of it also. Maybe we will have a little of it also. Maybe if we work hard and get some kind of material security that we can pass on to them, we can enjoy a little of it on the way as it's going through our hands. Indeed, who knows if they're good children and faithful to us, they might even take some care of us when we get past the stage of caring for ourselves. And so we are all very conscious of the need for some kind of security. And uh, the reason for that is we were made for absolute security. We were. We were made by a dear creator. That's why you have an eye that is able to focus better than your Nikon camera. That's why you have a sound system that is better than the latest that the Japanese have produced in sound systems, stereo sound systems. You have a better one inside your ears than they will ever produce. And it's because your ears and your eyes were made by better manufacturers than your camera or your stereo system. They were made by an intelligent being that lies behind our universe. And we've been talking about that intelligent being and about the fact that he had a son who appeared on our planet about 1960 years ago. And that son assured us that his father, the creator of the universe, made you and made me because... He wanted to love us. That's it. He wanted to love us. He wanted us to be his friends. He wanted us to be his children. He wanted us to walk through our lives with him beside us. He's invisible, but he's able to feed thoughts through our minds to us. And he wanted us to walk in that kind of relationship with himself. And as we did that, he would provide us with all that we needed. And that's what this man, Jesus, said. He said... Why are you anxious about your life? What you'll eat or what you'll drink or what you'll put on? Is life not far more than clothing? And isn't it the body more than just raiment? Look at the lilies of the field. They don't toil and they don't reap, and yet Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Now if God... So clothes the grass of the field, which today is and tomorrow is cast into the fire. Will he not much more clothe you? And look at the birds of the air. They neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns. Yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not of more value than they? 
And why are you anxious? You, with all your anxiety, cannot add one cubit to the span of your life. Your Heavenly Father knows that you need all these things. And so he assured us that our Father loved us and knew we needed material security, knew we needed certain clothes and certain houses and shelter and food in order to continue to live the span of years that he had planned for us in this life here on this earth. And he knew that. And he would take care of those things. And of course, if we had lived believing in him and not become practical little atheists, if we had continued to trust him, as we trust, of course, the ground under our feet, you don't worry all the time about whether it'll fall away from you or not. Even if you do live in California, you still accept that the ground is pretty solid. The people in Australia aren't all worried about whether they're going to fall off the bottom of the world or not. Just as we trust those things that are all created by him and held in place by him, so it's reasonable to trust him and depend on him for the things that we need in this present life. But we, of course, have decided, no, we're not. We're not going to do that. We don't know who holds the world in place. We don't know why it stays in its regular orbit month after month and year after year. We don't really know what the law of gravity is. We just give it a name. We don't explain it. We don't really know how our heart beats. We just know that it beats. We don't know what keeps our blood chugging around our body thousands of miles every week. But we're going to believe we're self-dependent, we're self-created, and we can get from this world what we need from it ourselves. Except that we are left with a great sense of emptiness. Because, of course, what we get from our Creator is not just an assurance that the world economy and our own national economies and indeed our own mini economies in our own neighborhood will work in such a way that we will be supplied with everything we need but we get beyond that a sense of the reason he's providing those things for us and uh, behind that sense of why he's providing things for us lies his love and that's really what we need and, of course, we know that so well in our own lives. It's not your dad's ability to provide money to provide you with clothes that matters so much to you. There comes a time when you pass beyond that need, and yet you still need his love. It's his love that is dear to you. It's not your mother's ability to wash your clothes or to supply you with food each day on time that counts most to you. It's her love. Those things just express her love. And so we, in stopping believing in this creator, in giving up any conscious dependence upon him day by day for his supply of our needs, we cut ourselves off from a sense of his love. And so we feel the need to get that love. And the only way we know to get it is to try to substitute some of the characteristics of that love for the love itself. And one of those characteristics is the supply of all our physical necessities. And so we end up trying to ensure that we can get from the world of things the security and the stability that the creator of the world alone can guarantee. And so you know what we do. We get the best education we can, trade it in for the best possible job that we can get, buy the best car that we can get, trade it up at the earliest possible moment for a better car, buy the most secure housing that we can find, try to pay the mortgage off as fully as we can, try to begin to invest our money and set up a pension fund so that somehow we can establish that sense of security that the Creator alone can finally give us and he can give it to us, not only because he can supply us with the physical necessities, but because he can give us that sense of love from the infinite being behind the universe. And so we end up trying to establish a security for ourselves from things that we can finally only get from the love of the Creator. But that we lack. And so we are bound on a course of futility. Let's talk a little about that.